Hey everyone, I'm Wendy and I'm the Curdy Girl and today I have a really special treat for you. I got an email from my friend Christine who told me about this finished cheese that she had been given and she did not know what to do with it. So I said, bring it on over to me and I'll find something to do with it. So this cheese is called Yustolepa, I believe is how it's properly pronounced. Uh, which is also, which is, uh, here's to show you what it looks like, Yustolepa. Roughly translated, that means uh, cheese bread. And what this is, is uh, this one is a cow's milk cheese. Uh, it has been known to be made with reindeer milk, but that would be just on an artisanal scale, I think probably in remote areas. But it is commercially available, as this one is, uh, made with cow's milk. Uh, this cheese is a fresh cheese. And it's been made by uh, pressing it into like a tray, like a, like a flat tray uh, with a bit of a ridge. And then they uh, toast it. And this is to just show you a little piece. So it looks almost charred. And they toast this cheese in the oven. And then it's just left to ripen for just a couple of days. And then it's immediately pretty well consumed. Now, um, this is known as mainly a, a breakfast or a dessert cheese. I prefer it for breakfast I think I've just started smelling it now it smells very um, it's a very mild cheese it's very like there's not not a lot of aroma going on and it looks kind of like a toasted tofu really if you think about it so I'm just gonna try a piece of it and tell you what I think of this used to live. So this yuschlepa is very, very mild. There's no salt. I'd, I'd be even surprised if there was any salt in the production of this, or minimal, very, very minimal. Um, so the main flavors you're getting here are pretty well milk, but like a bit of a sour, not like sour, a bit sour cream, sour, not cream, not even, more like a sour milk situation. It's very light. Um, I think it's only 24% milk fat, I think, if I remember reading that correctly. Uh, sorry, scratching my nose. Uh, but it's very, um, it's a very easy to eat cheese. From what I've also read, um, people will totally like, grill this in the morning and have it for breakfast. So if I wake up early enough tomorrow, I'm going to grill this and see what it's like. I think it'll grill up probably like a halloumi because it's pretty solid and there's no, it's not like string cheese at all. There's no stringiness. Now, commonly, this is used, um, this is eaten with uh, jam. So I don't have any cloudberry jam, as all the references dictate. But I do have lingonberry, which is from Sweden. I know not Finland, but close. They're geographically closer, at least. So here is some jam on my cheese. There you are. So I'm going to try this and tell you what I think. That's where it's at. The cheese and the jam, best friends. I'd almost, um, like, this is probably not even the best jam to go with. I think maybe because it's a little bit tart. Like a regular berry jam of any kind, I think, would be very nice. Maybe blueberries, but definitely raspberries because they're more closely related to uh, cloudberries than lingonberries are. But I was going for terroir and, and regionality at the very least. But anyways, so this, and I've also read... Now this is peculiar. I, I might try tomorrow just to get a kick out of it and see what happens. But what I have read is that people take this cheese, drop it into their coffee, and drink their coffee that way, but they don't actually eat the cheese. I don't know. I might try just to see what happens. Uh, it sounds a little peculiar, but I might just try it and just see what happens. So anyway, this is the story on Eustolepa, this lovely Finnish cheese. It's a Finnish specialty. You can't get it in Canada, North America, anywhere. I think you actually have to go to Finland or have somebody go to Finland and get it for you. Unless a Finnish store might import it, maybe. But you're not finding this at your local grocery store. That much is sure. Uh, apparently in Finland, some homes, you can make it in the home, and good for you. But I don't know if we have the resources, the skill to know how to do that here just yet. I think you might need a lesson just to, to see how it's done. So anyways, next time you're in Finland, get yourself some yeast de lepa and have it for breakfast.